Hi, I'm Matt Mayfield, and you're watching the Audio Fundamentals course. So today we're going to talk about cables. And to do that, we need to quickly review the three electrical levels that analog signals are sent in. So in a typical sound system, we've got a microphone, a preamplifier, a power amplifier, and a speaker, which gives us three levels. There's mic level and line level. Both of these are low voltage levels. And then in the connection from the power amp to the speaker, we've got speaker level, which is high voltage. Now in the simplest kind of cable, if you take the plug off of it, you'll see two wires. One serving as the ground or neutral point or earth, and the other serving as the signal wire. This is called an unbalanced cable. In this case, we've got the ground or earth or neutral representing the zero point and the conductor, the hot or the signal, that represents the analog wave. So as the analog wave goes up, the electricity increases in a positive direction. As it goes down, it decreases in a negative direction all around that zero point. Now one of the disadvantages to using electricity to represent an analog sound wave is that there are bits of electrical interference happening all the time. So any noise that leaks into the cable will show up in the signal when it reaches the next piece of equipment. Fortunately, most of the time, the noise is pretty minimal because we use shorter cable runs. Also, so far we've been dealing with low voltage as far as interference. With high voltage speaker level signals, the interference becomes almost insignificant. If we do a visual analogy, we'd have to zoom out so far that that tiny little spike of interference, you can't even see it in the midst of this extremely strong speaker level signal. Now for a low voltage cable, those are constructed with a shield that wraps around the signal. The shield is electrically conductive and it serves as the ground or the zero point. The thing to keep in mind is that these cannot handle speaker level signals. If you try to run a speaker level signal through them, you might get away with it for a while, but the cable will start to heat up, your amplifier will not be able to perform properly, and there's even a fire hazard with that. Meanwhile, a high voltage cable meant for speakers has just two separate lines in it that are not wrapped around each other as a shield. There's just a neutral and a hot. If you try to use a high voltage cable for an instrument or another low voltage purpose, you'll end up collecting much more interference and noise than you would otherwise and not get a good result with it. If you're using active speakers, you don't need to use these cables. You can use low voltage cables because you are sending the speaker a line level signal and then it is amplifying it internally to speaker level. So a couple points about cable construction. We've got guitar or instrument or mic cables as low voltage, and we've got speaker level cables, that's high voltage. And you shouldn't get those confused, you have to keep them separate. When you have a longer run of cables, you end up with higher electrical capacitance, which means a duller sound for guitars, certain types of mics, and a few other things. Line level signals, active guitar pickups, and most microphones though, are not as effective by high capacitance in the cables. So you can get away with a longer cable run. But there's another disadvantage, which is a long run of cable, the shield is not going to completely block all electrical interference. But for high voltage signals, interference and capacitance are not a big deal. They almost don't affect it at all because the signal is so strong and so low impedance. But if you want to do a cable run for a very low voltage source, such as a microphone or a passive guitar or most line level equipment, you have two strategies to deal with this. One is, for passive guitars and other high impedance sources, you can run it through a direct box or a DI box, which converts the signal to low impedance, which means it can resist the effects of capacitance in long cables. The other thing that you can do is use balanced cables. A balanced cable uses three conductors. It has the same ground or neutral or earth, and it has the same hot or signal, but it also contains an additional copy of the signal run out of polarity. What this means is, when that cable encounters electrical interference, the interference will affect both the positive and negative copies of the signals equally. At the receiving end, the input will invert the polarity of the negative signal, mix them together, and we end up 
canceling out the interference, but doubling the signal. Now, if you look at a balanced cable, you will see three wires. You'll see the shield, same as in an unbalanced cable, and then two signal wires, one for the negative, sometimes called cold, one for the positive, called hot. If you look at the connections from the wires inside the cable to the pins on the XLR connector, you'll see how they connect in this order. Now, it's also possible to use a quarter-inch connector like this as a balanced cable. Let's take a closer look at that. For a balanced cable, this is called a TRS connector, or tip ring sleeve, because it has three spots for electricity to flow through. The tip, which contains the hot, the ring, which contains the cold, and the sleeve, which contains the ground. That's different from a regular unbalanced cable because of the addition of the ring. Another thing you can do with TRS cables is to send two independent signals on them. In this case, we're using one for a stereo signal. This is similar to what you would have with an eighth inch or 3.5 millimeter connector, such as you would find on many consumer headphones or MP3 players or the like. With this use of a TRS cable, you would put the shield again on the sleeve, the right side of the stereo signal on the ring, and the left side on the tip. Now here's an interesting question for you. What would happen if you plugged this cable and you were running a stereo audio signal through it with left and right? What would happen if you ran it into a balanced input? If you know the answer, leave it in the comments. So let's recap real quickly. We've got balanced versus unbalanced cables, and here we're talking about low voltage, so instrument, mic, or line level. For balanced cables, we have three wires. We can go long distances with minimal noise. We can use phantom power. One disadvantage is balanced cables require the extra circuits on the input equipment to flip over the negative signal. And usually these use XLR connectors or sometimes a TRS connector. For an unbalanced cable, that's a two-wire cable and it's susceptible to noise, but usually the noise is not too bad over short runs. Let's say 20 feet, six meters or so. As long as you're under that, usually you're okay. You can't use phantom power on an unbalanced cable. And usually these are TS, in other words, tip sleeve, or RCA cables, which are the phono jacks that used to come on turntables and are often used in home entertainment systems. Or you can run dual unbalanced signals on a three-wire cable with a TRS jack. With high-voltage speaker-level signals, you don't usually see balanced connections because they're not necessary. The unbalanced speaker cables have a thicker wire, so they can conduct more electricity. The signal's so powerful that shielding from noise is not really an issue, so you usually just see two wires. You don't see a shield in a wire. Capacitance is not usually an issue, so you can go fairly long runs without running into a problem. And usually, these are quarter-inch TS or a Speakon style. That's the kind with the blue ring. You do have to be careful about these because when audio is running through them at high levels, it's a shock hazard, the same as the AC mains in your house. Thanks a lot for watching.